In this video, we are going to discuss about dining philosopher's problem. First, let us see the problem. Assume five philosophers, five philosophers such as P0, P1, P2, P3 and P4 uh, who are sitting around a circular dining table and uh, we have a bowl of rice. A bowl of rice is there in the center of your table. Next, in front of each philosopher, a plate is there. So, in front of P0, we have a plate. In front of P1, we have a plate. Likewise, uh, uh, in front of P2 and uh, P3 and P4 also, we have a plate. Okay. Uh, and uh, here, five chopsticks are there. Chopstick is nothing but fork. Here, we are representing chopsticks with the help of... Uh, C0, C1, C2, C3, C4. So, five chopsticks or forks are there. Okay. Uh, here, each philosopher uh, mainly will be in uh, two states. So, each philosopher will do mainly two activities. So, the first one is philosopher can eat or, and the second activity is philosopher can think. So, each philosopher will do these two activities. Let us see the first one. If the philosopher is not eating, then it means that philosopher is thinking. If the philosopher is not thinking, then it, it means that the philosopher is eating. Okay. Uh, here, here, P naught. Here, generally for eating, uh, one fork or one chopstick is enough for us. But here the constraint is each philosopher must require two chopsticks in order to eat. So, on the left side of each philosopher, we have a fork. And on the right side of each philosopher, we have a fork. If we consider P0. So, P0 requires C0 and C1 forks for eating. If we consider uh, uh, P3. So, P3 requires C3 and C4 forks for eating. So, each philosopher must require two forks. So, one fork on the left hand side and another fork on the right hand side in order to eat. Okay. Assumes that P0 is eating. So, P0 is eating means P0 grabbed C0 fork as well as C1 fork. Okay. Assumes that P0 is eating. Then we can say that there is no chance for P1 and P4 to eat. Why? Because in order to eat, P1 requires C1 fork, but C1 fork was already acquired by P0. If you consider P4, P4 required C0 fork, but C0 fork was already acquired by P0. So here the point is, it is not possible for the adjacent uh, philosophers to eat simultaneously. So while P0 is eating, uh, so it is not possible for P4 and P1 to eat. While P0 is eating, then there is a chance for P2 to eat. Likewise, there is a chance for P3 to eat. But adjacent philosophers cannot eat simultaneously. So, this is the problem here. And here one more problem is, uh, suppose assumes that uh, all the philosophers becomes hungry simultaneously and each philosopher get one fork. Let P0 acquired C0 fork, P1 acquired C1 fork, P2 acquired C2 fork, P3 acquired C3 fork, P4 acquired C4 fork. So now what will happen? Each philosopher will wait for another fork. But that fork was already allotted to some other philosopher. So likewise, each philosopher, there is a possibility that each philosopher may wait for that uh, chopstick for a longer period of time. Uh, and then uh, because of starvation or hungry, a philosopher may die. Okay, So that is the problem here. This problem is called as deadlock problem. So, this problem is called as deadlock. Why? Because each philosopher need another fork, but that fork was already allotted to some other philosopher. So, likewise, each philosopher has to wait for a longer period of time. So, a deadlock may occur here. Okay. How we can solve that problem? Here our target is with starvation, no person has to die. That means each philosopher has to get a chance for eating. So, that is the problem here. So, how to solve this problem? In order to solve this problem, uh, we are uh, using this algorithm. 
here we are implementing this algorithm with the help of a semaphore so we know what is a semaphore semaphore is nothing but uh, an integer variable semaphore uh, here we are using binary semaphore binary semaphore means the value may be either 1 or 0 okay uh, here uh, here the semaphore is represented with the help of uh, chopstick variable here chopstick is nothing but an array so here totally we have uh, how many philosophers are there five philosophers are there so here this is nothing but uh, a semaphore array variable so first chopstick is uh, uh, c of 0 next one is c of 1 next c of 2 so totally five persons are there so c of 3 c of 4 where c of naught represents the first chopstick that is nothing but c naught if you consider c of 3 c of 3 means fourth chopstick so that is nothing but c of 3 okay here let us assume that initially all these chopsticks contains an element called one so here one means that the chopstick is free whereas zero means that the chopstick was already allocated to some other philosopher here all initial values of all these values are zero uh, one why because initially all the chopsticks are free uh, here uh, so this is the function here uh, here mainly we are using two operations the first operation is weight operation the second operation is signal operation first let's see what is weight operation a philosopher can get a fork a chopstick with the help of the weight operation so weight of chopstick of i means first chopstick he will get the first chopstick with the help of this operation weight of chopstick of i plus one modulo phi means second chopstick okay and the next operation is signal operation so once the eating is over then the philosopher has to place that uh, chopstick or fork on the table with the help of the signal operation so mainly we are using two operations so wait for grabbing the chopstick and signal for uh, placing the corresponding chopstick on the table now let us assume that uh, p naught has executed wait operation first so what is the operation wait of chopstick of i so here p naught means here the number is zero so wait of chopstick of zero wait of chopstick of zero that means c of zero so what is c of zero value one so one means that it is free c zero is free so now c zero will be allotted to p naught and uh, here c naught is allocated so one is changed to zero so zero specifies that the chopstick was allotted okay next weight of chopstick of i plus one modulo phi so this is nothing but uh, circular q okay here uh, we have p naught p1 p2 p3 p4 so after p4 we have p naught so in order to go from uh, c4 to c naught we are using this uh, uh, this one this function so i plus one so let us assume that i value is four so four plus one means five five mod five means zero so from four we can go to zero with the help of this function this is nothing but uh, circular q implementation from p4 we now we have to go to p naught okay so that should be done with the help of this function okay next uh, p naught will execute this operation weight of chopstick of i plus one here what is a value zero so zero plus one means one one modulo phi means one modulo phi means five ones are five zeros are zero one so one modulo phi means one so weight of chopstick of one that means here uh, weight of c of one so one so one it, it means that c of one is free so now it uh, now c of one will be allocated to p naught so this value will be changed to zero now why because it was uh, c1 fork was allotted to p naught okay then after that uh, p naught will use uh, c naught and c1 fork for eating so once the eating is over then p naught philosopher philosopher one has to put down the corresponding forks on the table so for that purpose signal operation is implemented signal of chopstick of i signal of c of zero c of zero signal operation means uh, he here that person is placing the chopstick on the table so now the chopstick is free so now this zero will be changed to one okay this zero will be changed to one then after that signal of chopstick of i plus one modulo phi so 0 plus 1 means 1 1 modulo 5 means 1 so 
so now c1 is also free so c1 is also free so 1 1 all the values are 1 so likewise any philosopher uh, can execute this algorithm let us assume that p3 wants to eat p3 wants to eat so first p3 executes weight of chopstick of what is i value p3 means here the number is 3 index is 3 so weight of c of 3 what is c of 3 1 what is c of 3 1 so it is free so now c of 3 will be allocated to p3 so this value will be changed to 0 okay next the pillow next weight of chopstick of i plus 1 modulo 5 so 3 plus 1 means what 4 4 modulo 5 means 4 modulo 5 means what 5 4 5 0 are 0 4 minus 0 means 4 so c4 c4 is also free here okay so now this c4 fork will be allotted to p3 so here it is not free now so it is changed to 0 okay so now p3 got c3 and c4 folks so with the help of those two folks p3 can eat now after the eating is over then p3 has to put down the corresponding two folks on the table so that should be done with the help of the signal operation so signal of chopstick of i here the index is 3 so signal of c of 3 so now what will happen the c of 3 value will be changed to 0 will be changed to 1 now why because it is free now okay p3 has completed its uh, operation next the signal of chopstick of i plus 1 modulo 5 so 3 plus 1 means what 4 4 modulo 5 means 4 4 modulo 5 means 4 now the c4 is also released now this value will be changed to 1 so likewise uh, each philosopher uh, can eat one by one without any problem if he uses this algorithm but this algorithm will cause us the problem this algorithm will produce us the deadlock when all the persons wants to eat simultaneously when all the persons wants to eat simultaneously then there is a possibility that we may get the deadlock already we have seen that problem and what is the problem of this algorithm adjacent philosophers cannot eat simultaneously while p0 is waiting then p1 and p4 has to wait until p0 completed its uh, eating okay so that is the problem here so how we can overcome that problem in order to overcome that problem we can uh, use three approaches let us see those three approaches let us see those three approaches the first approach is instead of five philosophers if we allow at most four philosophers then this deadlock problem can be avoided to some extent so four philosophers with five chopsticks at most if we allow maximum four philosophers with five chopsticks uh, then to some extent uh, we can avoid the deadlock problem and uh, the second solution is a philosopher has to pick up the two chopsticks only when both are free so that means uh, if we consider p1 p1 has to pick up the chopsticks only when c1 and c2 are free if one of the chopstick is not free if one of the chopstick is already allotted to some other uh, philosopher then p1 has to wait until both the chopsticks are free if we implement uh, this uh, this approach also then we can avoid the deadlock to some extent okay so when both chopsticks are free then only the corresponding philosopher has to has to do the operation okay and the last one is if we change the order if we change the order then also to some extent we can avoid the deadlock so that means here uh, if we if we take odd philosophers odd philosophers means p1 p3 then left to fork should be taken first and then right fork should be taken if we consider even philosopher then right fork should be taken first and then left to fork should be taken if we if we implement these three policies then to some extent we can avoid the deadlock so this is about uh, dining philosopher problem this is one of the best example of classical problems of synchronization mainly we have uh, three classical problems are there producer consumer problem reader writer problem and this is another example